welcome to another episode of 90 Minutes of Wisdom, a channel dedicated to helping you expand your knowledge and develop a more successful and peaceful mind. I'm so excited about my guest today. She is a winner of a beauty pageant. She was crowned in March as Miss Montreal 2020. Her outer beauty is matched or exceeded by her inner beauty. I welcome to the show, Catherine Rose. Welcome, Catherine. Hi, thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Um, I didn't get too much done today, just trying to enjoy my Sunday fun day, <laughs> just chilling around the house. Um, so I wanted to ask you about um, the obvious, let's get the obvious questions out of the way. How does it feel to be Miss Montreal 2020? I mean, it feels amazing. It's it's just an honor to be able to have a position where people are paying attention to me so that I can share all of my own opinions about um, how to make Canada a better place, how to make Montreal a better place for all of us, and just be able to shine light on the various charities that I believe in and everything like that. So I'm, I'm really happy and grateful. Awesome. And quick question. What what did you do to prepare for the pageant? Like, is there a special diet, a coach? Like, how, how did you prepare for such a thing? Well, I simply applied online to become a, a contestant for Miss World Canada. And after I applied online, I was granted a Skype interview with uh, Michelle Weswaldi, who represented Canada at Miss World in 1996. And it was just a simple interview process. Um, she asked about the things that I enjoy, my hobbies and interests. Um, she asked about uh, my volunteer work. She asked about my schooling. And of course she got a good look at me. So <laughs> hopefully I, I, I suppose I met her expectations when it came to how I physically present myself. And um, they decided that I would be the best representative for Montreal at the Miss World Canada beauty pageant in Toronto. So that was, that was basically it. It was basically just a simple Skype interview. Yeah, but did, did you like eat kale for like two weeks straight? Or did you like <laughs> do anything? Like what did you do to prepare? Well, in between now, since I got the title in March and whenever, the big pageant is going to take place where they crown Miss Canada. So in between now and that pageant, yes, I am eating a lot of kale and uh, working out and just trying to go for walks as much as I can. Um, I also, I do have a coach. I did invest in that. Um, so she just holds my hand through the whole process because this is all pretty new to me. It's my first pageant. So together, we just practice like questions and answers. We practice, uh, we just work on, you know, confidence. Um, I'm also keeping very up to date with current events because you never know what the judges are going to ask you at the pageants. They could ask you, um, they could ask you anything <laughs> about current events. They could ask you, uh, what do you think about the government and Bangladesh's response to COVID-19, they could ask you that. Mm -hmm. And you have to know right away what they're talking about. So I read the news every day, you know, not to the point where it starts to affect my mental health <laughs> or like it starts to depress me. And um, I work on my walk, my runway walk, because we have heels like this big. And um, yeah, that's basically what I'm doing to prepare. Okay, nice. And as you mentioned, it was like your first contest you ever entered. Yes. And, and you won. Yes. <laughs> and, you, and you didn't prepare for that contest. For the interview, no, I didn't prepare. Because <laughs> I, I didn't even think, because I applied online and I was like, okay, like whatever, like what shot do I really have? So I didn't even bother preparing. But then like they chose me and I was like, oh my gosh, okay, now I really have to like... <laughs> buckle down <laughs> so amazing that's great super Thank super you. cool so yeah let's uh let's talk about a bit uh address that thing that you were crowned in in march and yes yeah um, and then so it must have been super exciting and amazing yes. and then also devastating right? yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean 
of course I was heartbroken that I couldn't because I had all these charity events booked where I was going to make an appearance with my sash and my crown so I had to cancel everything the city went into lockdown and of course I was heartbroken but on the other hand we just all have to be grateful that we're healthy and that we're not actually one of the people who are infected with coronavirus. So although yes, it was a huge disappointment that I didn't get to spread my wings and be Miss Montreal all over town with my sash and my crown, I'm just so grateful that I have my health and that I haven't been personally affected by this horrible disease and no one in my family has either. Thank God. It's a great positive uh, attitude to have. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, there's so many questions. There's so many <laughs> things I want to ask you about. Uh, one was, so I was doing my homework uh, uh, on you and uh, I saw the article about you delivering pizzas to nurses. And I thought that was so super sweet. So do you want to speak oh, to that you. for a little bit? It was a spontaneous thing. Um, I was just driving around in my car, just trying to enjoy some sunlight after our cold, dark winter. And I just heard on the radio that it was International Nurses Day. So I decided to pull over and I got 10 large pizzas from Little Caesars. Shout out to Little Caesars on St. Charles. And uh, I delivered it to four different hospitals, um, the Jewish, the General, uh, St. Mary's, and uh, the one here in the West Island, the Lakeshore Hospital. Unfortunately, when the Montreal Times posted that article, I did get some backlash because I wasn't wearing a mask when I went to deliver the pizzas. And I totally understand where people were coming from. But it was a spontaneous thing, you know, I was just in my car, so I didn't really have time to grab a mask or anything. But I, I totally understand people's frustrations and I totally take accountability for that. Yeah, but, in, you know, in your defense, there was uh, a lot of, a few weeks ago, they were saying that don't wear masks because when you touch the mask, it's just going to go to your hands and you're going to be more likely to touch your yeah. face. So we had this period where they were telling us, you know, not to wear masks. And then there was, then suddenly they changed their mind and said, no, yeah. do, do wear masks. So, you know, and I think when you were doing that in your defense, like when you actually deliver the pizzas, we were still in that kind of like, we don't know if masks are good or not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, this disease has been, you know, sending us curveballs everywhere you know people aren't sure what the effects are people aren't sure what the symptoms are people aren't sure of the best ways to protect themselves so they like, get the narrative has been changing so much you know yeah but that see that's their issue their filters their problem where you do something wonderful spontaneous super kind like i don't know it's like your intuition or you just have a very good heart to listen on the radio <laughs> because how many other thousands of people were listening to that same radio going ah oh, yeah and then just not doing nothing about it, right? So what yeah. do you think in, in you that just like sparked it? Like saying, you think, do you relate that to uh, a responsibility as Miss Montreal 2020? Or like, you know what I mean? Would you have not done it if you weren't Miss Montreal 2020? Or did it make you think of that? Or like, how do you, or just No, I, I would have done it regardless. It's just the way that I was raised by my parents. They, they just always taught me to be a helper and to be compassionate. I haven't really done much during this quarantine. Like all, all I've done is just kind of stay home and stuff. While Meanwhile, while I'm just at home watching Netflix, these nurses and these patients are fighting for their lives. So what's a, what's a pizza? to that you know like I wish I could have given them more you know so I, I figured it was just a small nice gesture that they deserve I think it was a very nice gesture it was super oh, sweet of you me. and uh, just to say there was many many people that could have done it but I didn't see anybody else those people that complained that you weren't wearing a mask where were their pizzas you know <laughs> they, they weren't delivering anything you know yeah. no and also I think people just have a negative uh, viewpoint towards beauty pageants in general like they see the words like Miss Montreal delivers pizzas they just kind of like roll their eyes like people just kind of have a condescending attitude towards beauty pageants so I yeah. think that's part of it too yeah well for sure there's there's a I mean there's a couple of reasons for that and one of the reasons is just um you know personal 
like uh, they're uncomfortable in their own skin, right? Because yeah. people are just so it's, it's they're, they're just projecting on you like their own insecurities, yeah, exactly. right? So it's not it's not about um, that. And you know, I, again, doing my homework on you, I know that for you, you you're using it in such a positive and amazing way to give you a platform and to use that platform for so many amazing positive things and charities and like the Joy Smith Foundation uh, is, mm -hmm. is one of them, right? That you, you're supporting strong. Mm -hmm. Do you want to maybe tell me a little bit uh, about that and how, what got you into, into, uh, into supporting that? Yes. Uh, it's a hard story for me to talk about, um, but I am personally a survivor of human trafficking. I can't go into too many details about it because I'm going to be testifying in July against my former traffickers. Um, but there is one story that I will share with you that happened to me when I was 20 after I was rescued. Well, actually I escaped. So, so after I escaped, I got into a relationship with a guy. We, we were happy for a few months. You know, everything was fine. He was just being a normal, nice boyfriend. And then one day um, he needed $1,500 to fix his car. And he sat me down and he was like, baby, like, I need your help. I need you to like go make this $1,500 for us. And I knew what he was doing. Like I had seen this before and I flat out refused. I said, no, I'm absolutely not going to do that. It's like be a man, go make your own money. And he, beats the crap out of me like he threw me down the stairs punching kicking he I thought I was going to die so then I went back to my parents house and um he was calling and calling and calling being like oh my god I'm so sorry I shouldn't have treated you like that crying and I'm 20 years old at the time you know <laughs> like this is a lot for a 20 year old to take and this is like my first real relationship so I, I forgave him and I went back to him and then um of course uh same thing you know we were fine for a few weeks and then the beating started again and then one night, um, the neighbors called the police because they heard me screaming and crying while I was being beaten. So the police came and they took me to a women's shelter, but the women's shelter was only a couple of blocks away from his house. So it was pretty awkward. And he was just lying to everybody, just saying like, oh, she's a liar. I never touched her, blah, blah, blah. She's just trying to ruin my life. So all the friends that I had made, they all turned their backs on me because everybody was just looking at me as like that just this girl who's just trying to ruin his life, you know, like so many domestic abuse survivors, you know, it's the girl who takes the blame or it's the girl who's labeled a liar. So um, then unfortunately, when it came time to testify against him in court, and this is one of my biggest life regrets, I did not testify and he got away with it. Why human trafficking is so important to me because that's how it happens to a lot of girls. She's vulnerable. She gets into a relationship with a guy. She thinks that that's her boyfriend. And slowly, slowly, he grooms her to begin selling sex. And it's not a situation she can easily escape from. As I said uh, before, sometimes the pimp impregnates her. So she's dependent on him for that. So they have a child together. Um, he gives her drugs. Like, it's, that's how it happens. That's yeah, that's truly modern. horrible. Yeah, it's so horrible. There's like monsters. Yeah, that's... We don't, yeah. we just don't hear, uh, you know, about these things. And, and, you know, I think it's really important that you're sharing this because we don't, we have such censored or, uh, especially with coronavirus, like all we hear is one thing. So it's like, we don't get to hear. And, and you would think that maybe coronavirus is like slowing down these pimps a little bit. Like maybe these girls can finally like have a break. But um, no, it's not stopping them at all. The Joy Smith Foundation, uh, we're working with survivors where their pimps were forcing them to go see clients 
right in the middle of COVID-19, exposing them to COVID-19, as well as everything else that comes along with sex trafficking. It's horrible. It's so horrible. And, and it is. It's like, uh, you know, listening to, to an interview uh, that you did just a, a week ago was really opened my eyes. I didn't know that that was something that was happening. And I like mm -hmm. to think of myself as extremely well, like, you know, educated and, and mm -hmm. well versed in what's going on. Uh, so there is, is there a need? Absolutely. There's a massive need for exposure to this and, and warnings to this, like you said, you know, to, to protect these, uh, these women from these monsters, you know. And if you don't mind, I would just like to quickly um, go over uh, things that we can do to like kind of prevent human trafficking. Absolutely. So the first one is awareness, like you said, just like talking about it as much as possible, how it works, and just removing the stigma that survivors are whores or prostitutes or anything like that. They're, they're not any of these things. They are survivors. Um, there's prevention. So we need to educate youth before pimps reach them. We need to support at-risk youth. So we need to give vulnerable girls and vulnerable boys love and care so that they don't have to get it from a pimp. We need to intervene. So this one requires care and patience because as I said, sometimes the girl, she's so like mentally codependent on the pimp that she doesn't even see herself as a victim. So like some, so we have to be very careful with how we intervene. So just like talking to her, just trying to plant that seed inside of her head that she is worth more than this. And if she does decide to get out, there are people who will help her and also support survivors. And we're going to talk about that later on. One thing that I really want to do to support survivors is like teaching them positive self-talk, uh, you know, positive affirmations, teaching them self-love to help them heal from their trauma. And we also need to reduce demand so we need to reduce demands by naming and shaming buyers of sex. Uh, we have to change the culture so that buyers of sex are called what they are, pedophiles, predators. They're not Johns, they're not clients. And we also need to de-glorify pimps in pop culture because I mean, come on, listen to so many songs about pimps. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yeah. it's so glorified. Yeah, it's totally wrong. I agree. And I'll also just quickly go over how it happens, like step by step. Traffickers identify and target a person whose vulnerable abilities and gain trust and form a bond. 51% of trafficked youth have been involved in the child welfare system and pimps often hang around group homes and foster homes. Some who are trafficked are controlled and closely monitored and don't have a chance to get help. Others may not realize or acknowledge what is happening to them is a crime. And the pimp will sometimes, as I said, impregnate his victim to create more codependency. They may also be manipulated to believe that nobody cares about them, including the police, and that they're alone in the world and that the pimp is the only one who cares about her. So she's better off with him. A bond is developed over time in stages. This is called the Romeo technique. It begins with luring, someone connected to the victim through social media or in real life. He will say nice things, take her out, and just be a nice boyfriend to her. The second step is grooming, which is pushing boundaries, like encouraging risky behavior, introducing her to drugs and alcohol, and encouraging her to skip school. The third step is isolation. Make the victim feel like the pimp is the only person who cares about her. The next step is manipulation. The pimp asks the victim to do sexual acts for him or for others to repay him for taking care of her and showing her kindness or to maintain their lifestyle or he simply threatens her with violence or he threatens to expose intimate photos of her. And then the final step is the exploitation. So the pimp abuses this relationship of trust slash dependency to make money. The pimp keeps all of the money. 
The pimp controls what they eat and when they eat, when they sleep, what they wear, and who they speak to. And so those are all the steps to uh, how sex trafficking works. Wow, yes, yeah, it's, it's devastating. It's, it's, it's so sad. It's so sad that that's, um, you know, that that exists in and of itself. And, and I, I think that, yeah, getting the word and educating um, is the right way to go so that girls can see that coming. At least they see it coming. And it's also very important to educate our young boys about, you know, respecting women and respecting consent um, so that they themselves don't grow up to be become traffickers or buyers of sex. You know, we need to raise our young Canadian boys to become men who would never even think of exploiting a woman sexually or buying a woman or a girl. And just those terms should be, like you said, like eliminated these certain negative terms yeah. for women yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to change our vocabulary and our perception, exactly. you know, on that. Um, so is there like a, a helpline or something? Like what if like a girl finds herself that's is getting in this situation? Is there some, like what's the way out? Either call the police or there is the um, National Human Trafficking Hotline that only just became a thing in 2018. Mm -hmm. So like we're only just starting to push back against sex trafficking very recently. So um, yes, she can call the national hotline. Yeah, that's right. and what about the penalties for these? Like hopefully, I don't know, like, like for someone who's caught in this. It all depends. Um, of course, when the police are trying to prosecute these pimps, they try to add as many charges as they can. For example, if he used a gun, if he ever like threatened her with a gun, they can add on a charge if the gun was illegally owned, which it probably is. <laughs> Um, they can add on charges for a sexual assault. Uh, they can add on charges for assault, for any kind of beatings that he may have given the victim. Each case is different. Uh, it, it depends on how many girls he had. Uh, it depends on if the girl was underage or not. What I'm getting at is, guess, is like, like, you know, there, there's no amount of like punishment or prison or even a death sentence isn't enough. I like what you were talking about before about one, educating the women, and then at the same time, making sure like to, to, to educate like the uh, boys growing up and to, to be responsible and, you know, so that it doesn't happen. It's a horrible reflection on our society that, that we haven't advanced to that, you know, level yet. Mm -hmm. How are these things still going on? We're in Canada. Imagine how much worse it is for the poor people in third world countries. Right. Often men will travel to countries in Southeast Asia, such as Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, to uh, have access, easier access to children. Yeah, that's, that's disgusting. Um, like with Th like Thailand, I, I was going to ask you about that. Like, so like you worked in Thailand, right? Yes. Okay. And then the winner of the Miss World Canada will be held in Thailand, right? Yes. When, knock on wood, when you win this. And, <laughs> um, and then they're big on beauty pageants and they're also big in, into, unfortunately, sex slavery, right? It's also very prevalent there. So like, why it is like, uh, I was listening to that interview and I was saying like, it just like Thailand just keeps coming back. You know what I mean? It seems like mm -hmm. a central theme. So what does Thailand mean to you? And how do you, like, how do you perceive it now from all these different points of view? First of all, the average Thai person, the average Thai man or woman is, of course, not involved in any kind of criminal activity or anything like that. They're, they are, as a whole, a very hardworking and honest people. I think that just the geographical positioning of Thailand within Asia makes it just an easy place for a lot of these things to congregate. I think that the reason beauty pageants are so popular in countries that have high amounts of poverty is because it's a way out. You know, the winner of a beauty pageant becomes an instant celebrity. Um, she gets all these doors open for her. She gets all these modeling gigs. So it, it's a way out of poverty for a lot of these women. So mm -hmm. I think that's why beauty pageants are so big in uh, these types of countries. And on a little bit of a lighter note, um, I read that you left Thailand to focus on your spirituality and to learn how to cook. 
So uh, is did that you, what that's? It, they did. They, somebody wrote that about you. So I no, want. That, <laughs> no, it's because um, the lady who interviewed me asked me what I was doing during my quarantine. And I said, I'm learning how to cook. That's not so, why I left. So that. what have you learned to cook is my question to you. Oh, gosh. Um, well, I have such a sweet tooth. So I'm baking a lot. Chocolate chip cookies, cheesecake. And also because it's a little bit easier to bake than to like do actual like big cooking things. I'm focusing on a lot of baking <laughs> these days. <laughs> okay awesome and you um you spoke a little bit about before um uh, which uh, the positivity and yeah. I saw that on Facebook it was really amazing that you were doing this five-day self-love um yes oh so you want to speak a little bit to that yes um each day when I would wake up I would just ask the universe for inspiration on what topic I wanted to cover for that day so for example, um, when I spoke about, well, spoke about, when I posted about um, how to have better conversations with people, that was something that we had just learned that day on my online class for beauty school. So it's really great how when you ask the universe to send you inspiration, it always delivers, you know, as long as you believe. It does, it does. Every, every video I do, I sit there quietly and wait for inspiration and then I do yeah. that video and if there's none then I don't do a video yeah you, you have to wait for the vibe <laughs> yeah, yeah so um yeah so you posted yeah so you you got inspired to do this five-day self-love which is really nice really mm -hmm. nice thing and, and another way that I'm trying to spread positivity was um something really touched my heart the other day when I was thinking like I was saying earlier that we should all just be grateful for our health. That got me to thinking, you know, 80% of COVID cases in Montreal are in our seniors' homes. So what I'm going to do, uh, I ordered about 400 little, like, cards from Amazon and stickers and stuff. So I'm just going to write notes to all the people who are in um, nursing homes. I know that there's 30 convalescent homes on the island of Montreal and then within those homes there's like 80 or something units so my goal is to send like a card um, to each unit of each uh, seniors home in Montreal just just to let them know that they're not alone because nobody wants to be sick by themselves you know they're scared and I just want to be able to um, send them these messages of hope and just let them know that I'm thinking about them and that they're not alone. So that's, I'm still waiting for the cards to arrive. They should be here in a couple of days and then I'll be sending those out. That's super nice. That's super nice of you. Again, oh, be you. very beautiful. Big heart. Big oh, heart. Thank you. Big but heart. yeah, it's just so important to just spread positivity as much as we can. Yeah. You know, it's that thing that there's levels of, perception or awareness and one of those uh levels is to understand that we're not so uh separate so that person that compassion that you're speaking with is 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 so beautiful to see the empathy that you have it's so beautiful oh, thank to you. you i also saw this um i watched your video on the tapping technique which we can't really show here because it's mostly like a, a podcast so like audio so but that was really cool and is that something you're still practicing right now to relieve uh, stress? Yes, I do that. And I've also, um, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of a gentleman called Jake Ducey on YouTube. Yes, yes I have. Oh yeah. my gosh, that is my guy. That is totally my guy. I downloaded his program, uh, The Second Mind. Sure. It's like a neuro programmer where he, oh, it's just so amazing. It's It's really just changed my life. Um, he just, it's the thing that you download and each video, it's about 15, 20 minutes and he just helps you meditate. He helps you visualize. He repeats positive affirmations that we repeat to ourselves to like reprogram our mind to be more positive. And it's just so amazing 
So I use that like twice a day. Okay, that's amazing. Oh. Yeah, it's like a gui guided meditation. It's funny, yeah, just it's guided meditation. Just because he is a student of Bob Proctor. Yes. And Bob Proctor, uh, just before actually jumping on this, I was I do a guided meditation from Bob Proctor on mm -hmm. abundance. That's just one of the best ones, like 22 minutes long. That's one of the ways they meditate is is with that. It's just kind of a good thing. And as you said, he's the king, uh, Bob Proctor of programming your subconscious mind. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So that you're, you know, so because you have your 95% subconscious mind and your 5% yes. conscious. So you need to program yourself. And I'm a firm believer in that. So oh, me too. this other lady who's quite amazing called Mary Kate. I don't know if you've ever seen any of her uh, meditations or her. Oh, I just became so infatuated with Jake that I just. <laughs> <laughs> I like, know, okay, I just, you. no, he's, he, he's fantastic. I've watched many of his things. He's great. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't really uh, researched any of the others. Also yeah. because I don't want to like confuse myself too much. Having too many cooks in the kitchen, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. They're just, you know what it is, is there's guided meditations are fantastic. And sometimes yeah. I say, like, I use them myself. But when I do very deep meditations, I do it like, just alone, um, with following my breath, and I start going, you know, really deep and opening the third eye and all that kind of stuff. And I was wondering, is that something that that you do? I usually like the sounds of rain. Oh, yeah, like kind of healing. Okay, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, those um, videos about um, raising like your vibration and like targeted, like the root chakra, like music targeted for those type of things. I have listened to those just because i think it's pretty music <laughs> not necessarily because yeah there's there's like sorry like you were saying like, yeah like um certain frequencies 528 hertz or 432 hertz like that's oh, okay. that's certain thing but like you know and that's i would some people like say it absolutely and some people say it's just hogwash it doesn't work that's okay i just listen to like just rain like sounds of rain yeah. falling it's just enough because you need to distract your mind uh, uh, just enough to and then focus otherwise your mind's like everywhere like too many thoughts exactly right? so, yeah and then affirmations you're talking a little bit about um what's yeah. your actually during my five days of self-love um uh one of the days i recorded a bunch of positive affirmations that i posted on instagram that my followers can listen to that they can just repeat to themselves and as i wrote in my caption under that post you know the way we speak to ourselves, we speak to ourselves so mean. Like we speak to ourselves in such a harsh way that we would never imagine speaking to our friends like that. Yeah. So it's there's, really just be nicer to yourself. Be nicer. Yeah, it is. And and there's um I did a video on it. Um and it's called the video is called Ants versus Pets. And mm -hmm. ants is an acronym for automatic negative thoughts. Okay. Right. So you, it's basically saying that you have to self-talk like uh, positive, empowering thoughts. So like pets. Yes. So you use positive, empowering thoughts to get rid of the ants, automatic negative thoughts. So thinking. So those kind of things. If you're not speaking to yourself, then the negative thoughts come in. So you kind of just have to keep like psyching yourself up you know having that inner exactly. dialogue like i'm awesome i can do it exactly. i can do it like you have to and the minute you go quiet for some reason our brain is really just programmed really negatively right it's like yeah well it's not that our brain is programmed negatively i mean if you talk to a little kid who hasn't had a chance to be punched in the face by life yet um their their vibration is totally high they're always hyping themselves up yeah, so yeah, you know, you're right. I agree. I agree with that. It's it's the like you're saying before, uh, early in the conversation, like not watching too much of the news because the news is negative. Like almost everything you turn on is is just so much negative. So I think mm -hmm. yes, I agree with that statement. It's conditioning, negative conditioning. It's conditioning. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna bring up um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know if you ever read like he's one of the kings of buying power, right? Like he's just amazing, and he used to walk around. So he won Miss Universe, right? Uh, bodybuilding uh, competition and he would talk about how he used to walk around his living room like he'd already won and he's yes. right that's it always stuck with me and then he's just yeah. like no I, I I felt it I'd walk around I already won it I already won the title I already mm -hmm. won it in my mind so I was gonna ask you if you're doing these kind of you know uh, mental exercises um, as well right now yes absolutely 
Um, and that's actually one of the things that my pageant coach has told me to do as well. She's telling me to visualize success. And um, I also use scripting where I just write the same sentence over and over and over and over and over and over um, until I just don't feel like writing anymore. And just pages and pages of loose leaf where I write like, I am Miss World Canada. I'm so happy and grateful that I am Miss World Canada. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm Miss World. Just until my hand hurts. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's amazing. And I, I love that. Like, I, I think that key that I think it's Bob Proctor that invented that was I'm so well invented coined or popularized it. I'm so happy and grateful now that that's I use that myself. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's I think it's very powerful. And the other thing is asking powerful questions. What would it take for me to be Miss Can World Canada, you know, 2020? What would it take to be like how and, and ask those questions because uh, so many times we ask the wrong questions right just like again on those negative ways like like why is my life so bad why does everyone else have so much bad like why is everyone else having fun and i'm not and we ask these questions but when you ask your subconscious mind this question you know why is my life so bad it's just well I'll, let me give you an answer and it makes your life oh, you know what I mean? interesting yeah like worse so it's asking the, the right questions and if you can start asking those things then it's looking to answer subconscious mind looking to answer it's going to give you evidence or compound on your reality you okay know, i'm gonna look more. into that i haven't heard that that before yeah okay cool yeah, yeah for sure yeah it's a good yeah, it's a powerful one <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a, it's a powerful one for sure you talked about um you know that now you're in you're in beauty school so is that something that's continuing you're, you said on you're doing it online right now yes um we are doing some classes online just like the more professional side of things but for the hands-on stuff oof I don't know when we're ever going to be able to do that because we do massage, we do makeup, uh, you know, we do facials. It's a lot of, a lot of touchy feely stuff. <laughs> so I, I have no idea when that's going to be back in place. We're making the best of it. Uh, right now I'm doing two hours a day, Monday to Friday online. And it, it's still just nice just to see the girls on our little zoom class, see all their little faces. <laughs> <laughs> And just feel like a sense of normalcy again, you know? Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself in, you know, five years from now? What, what, do you, what is the vision for yourself? Or Yes, my vision is definitely, I want to pursue more of my creative side. Right now I'm training with a vocal coach online, uh, like through Zoom. And I, I really want to build up that creative side of me and I would just like love to do like shows and just do songs I don't know if I could write my own song I mean I asked the universe the other day to send me inspiration to write my own song so I'm still waiting on that <laughs> but um yeah that's in five years I would definitely like to be somewhere with my singing also I would like to do professional modeling Right now, I've just started like dipping my feet in to modeling, to the modeling world just on Instagram. And the reason why this is all kind of starting right now at 28, I'm 28, by the way. <laughs> and the reason why I'm only just starting to do this now at 28 is because, like I said, when I was 19, I was unfortunately a victim of human trafficking. And even though I did escape, it takes about 12 to 15 years for a human trafficking survivor to even begin to like mentally be okay enough to like try to rebuild her life. So it's, it's been about 10 years now where like I feel finally okay enough to like start pursuing life because for so many years I was frozen in trauma. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, that's so horrible. Thanks for sharing that. It must be, you know, you're incredibly brave. People have this idea that um, these girls are just bad girls who are just making bad decisions. But no, like I was, I was taken five hours away from Montreal. I was cut off from the world. I didn't have a phone. I had no way, no chance of escape. I was being beaten. I was being starved. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, that's so horrible. That's so horrible. You know, at least though, you know, that you turned it 
you're turned it into something yeah, positive. And I, and I, positive. yeah, and I think that's, that's like, so, uh, so amazing and so admirable and, and, and well, you know, you. and difficult because, you know, some people might just want to like, just bury it, right? Like bury it and try. I to, tried. Right? I like, tried, yeah. Andrew. I, I tried for years to bury it. Yeah. You can't. No, that's it. Because it just, it comes out even in some cases where I would share my experience with a, a boy I was dating or something, he would, you know, judge me or one even said like, oh, it's okay, Kat, I forgive you. And it's like, what do you mean you forgive me? You forgive me for being a victim of a crime? Wow. What a, what a horrible thing to say. I hope you dumped exactly. him like right away. That's like yeah. what a stupid it's thing to say. You know, I, w my three um, core principles are gratitude, forgiveness, and love. Gratitude can be, you know, usually quite, I find it quite easy. Okay. Like it's like a habit, like that you get and just be grateful for everything. Forgiveness is, can be so challenging to forgive yes. other people, especially in these hor horrific things. Forgiving yourself can be so difficult. It's one of the, one of the really, really hard. And then love and, you know, just if you can master those three things, you've mastered life, but it's so difficult, mm -hmm. you know? I agree. And uh, I remember Jake Ducey said on one of his videos, mm -hmm. something that really stuck with me. He said that in the Bible, it says that the more you have, the more you will be given. Yeah. And the less you have, the more will be taken away. Yeah, and even, Jake, sorry, it says, yeah, even, even the little that you have will be taken away. Even yes. the little that you have yeah. will be taken away. Mm -hmm. And Jake was just saying, like, uh, this doesn't mean that God or the universe just loves rich people. He just meant that those who are grateful for what they have will get more. As you get um, older and you get more mature and then you raise your vibrations you get to this like level where you attract the right things come into your life right and those like negative things don't because of that level but that's achieved through time and through meditation and through exactly right it's also a great affirmation to meditate on is i am attracting the right people over and over you do you just naturally as your vibration goes up you can't it's as like a mismatch otherwise between people and sometimes what i found in my life is that i gain new friendships uh, like you and uh, then I lose like you know other people because their vibration is like low and they go to like another thing and there's no yeah. it's, not, it's not judging them or they're not wrong it's their life experience or their life path and it's just the energies don't match yeah mm -hmm. you know I asked you about that like your your you know your five year plan kind of because you seem like on um, such a positive trajectory like it seems like you know you, you seem like such a, a warm-hearted person and oh, thank you. so many nice things and you're doing the right like you're doing the right work like like what's very close to my own heart where I work on myself is self-help and developing and meditation and raising my own vibrations and then I use my time to serve others and to help them and raise their vibration to have you have to lives. take care of yourself first before you take care of others yeah i always think of the 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 um, on the airplane right the oxygen mask goes on you first <laughs> I, I always think of that but it really becomes like you know a path that becomes like a life path but once you start seeing that these things uh, really, really work. Like it's like Bob Proctor is right. J T Jake Ducey is correct in what he's. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. You know mm -hmm. that, that that people say, "Oh, I don't believe in mind power." Like it's just crazy. Like you mm -hmm. know, I think you're going to do amazing things in your life. I think you've already oh, done amazing things, but I see great a great great future for you. Uh, there was a coach, one of my coaches. He could tell anybody if they're going to be like a winner, or a loser, or rich or not. People would say, "I want to be rich," and he would just ask them. He'd say okay well what time do you wake up in the morning what do you do during like during your day what are you doing to become rich what do you do on your weekends how much tv do you watch like with like five or six questions and he said i'll tell you where you're gonna where you're gonna be in five years you don't have to say because you know i know like you know oh you're watching like you know 20 hours of netflix and you drink 40 beers a week <laughs> and you get up late as you can on the weekends he's like you're you're, you're, you're not in a good trajectory <laughs> you know you're not uh -huh. you're not going to be rich you know you just or or, or attain your goals doesn't even have to be that as a goal but it's those patterns and habits and developing those good patterns and those good habits mm -hmm. and good intentions and I think that all that together and the other thing is just not to be too hard on yourself on your journey like while you're developing these habits like for example right now I'm doing intermittent fasting uh, where I only eat during a certain period of the day and sometimes I, I give in and I just 
gorge on uh, Doritos or some kind of snack in the middle of the night. And my first thought is to like be hard on myself to be like, oh, Catherine, like, don't you care about your body? Like, blah, blah, blah. Just like speaking very negatively to myself. But then on the other hand, it's be like, no, Catherine, like you've been doing this so well for the past month. Okay, you made a mistake. Move on. You have to be kind to yourself. I agree. Forgive yourself immediately. And it's, and the yeah, interest, forgive yourself immediately, immediately. And then see the, and the key to it, what I was, I was just meditating on this the other day is that um, it's the vibrational level. So I don't know. Sure. If you're, if you ever read the book power versus force, are you familiar yeah. with that? Okay. Um, and there's like a vibrational scale. Okay. That starts at um, like zero and it goes to a thousand. So a thousand is like the prophets, like uh, it doesn't matter what you believe in, but just being like Jesus, Muhammad, or like Lao Tzu or uh, all the things like this, the ultimate is a thousand. And then everything's broken down. And the lowest vibrations are like shame and guilt, like about 20 or 30 okay, on the vibrational scale. And this is like, um, you know, mathematically, and not mm -hmm. spiritually, this is mathematically testable. And so you judge yourself, right? So if you eat that, that you see that bag of cookies, right? And you're like, oh my God. And you go and you eat like eight cookies, right? Like, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, that's so good. Okay. Now it's, it's, that's okay. Eating the cookies is not a problem. The problem is if your you feel, reaction. if your reaction, now, if you feel shame about it, you're, you've just dropped your vibration to 30. Okay. And now being in shame, like we we're talking about earlier is attracting shame vibrations, like really low vibration things into your life. So it's you that's judging yourself. So you're like, um, you know, the judge, jury, and executioner, if you will, of your own thing by eating that is a simple cookie analogy, but by that, whereas you just say, you know, what? I ate those cookies. That's okay. I forgive myself. I had a good time. They were, they were good <laughs> cookies, you know, like they were awesome. I'm maybe not going to eat eight cookies tomorrow, but you could drop like tenfold your vibration just being on like, oh, why yeah, just like that. Yeah, why did I do that? Why, you know, and those things, and it's, uh, you know, it's always find it strange. Viral. How, yeah, how we, how we are so hard on our, ourselves, and it's it's a big it's a big problem, and that's why I, I'm a strong believer in the right questions and affirmations, in constantly watching positive things like Jake Ducey, like uh, Bob Proctor, and and I could go on, I could name hundreds right now in a row, but uh, of re either reading or watching on YouTube, and that's why that's what inspired me to do my YouTube channel because you just oh, you, nice. you need to continue to. Yes. To, to reinforce like you can't just you can't stop basically because you you, yeah. you you stop reinforcing that you're you're going to have those automatic negative thoughts that are gonna yeah be yeah it's a lifelong thing exactly a lifetime journey yeah i wanted to ask you too catherine is there anything that nobody ever asks you that you want to share just like something fun or cool or interesting or just you know something that you or anything anything that you just say you know you'd like to share with uh with the one listeners. thing i would like to share oh and that's such a pageant question too <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I actually yeah. read i read before this interview i read the top 25 pageant questions i didn't ask you any of them on purpose <laughs> actually sorry where are you going to see yourself in five years is a pageant question but everything else yeah. i just i stayed away from it i didn't want to do that to you yeah. something fun hmm. well Oh gosh, I'm so I'm so bad at being put on the spot. Oh my gosh, I'm such a bad pageant girl. <laughs> um, well, I mean, recently I've started uh, doing archery, which is super fun, and my trainer no longer feels the need to hide whenever I pick up the bow and start shooting. So I've gotten pretty good at it. I don't know. <laughs> Oh God, is that bad that I don't know? It's not. It's not. And what have we what have we learned? Forgive yourself right away. <laughs> and it's yeah, all you know yeah, what? You're right. It doesn't right. matter. Yourself right away. You've been like so, you know, transparent and I really appreciate that. And I have so much admiration for you in the oh, fact thank that you. you've been through so much hard stuff and you turn around to a positive and then you're dedicating your life to um helping people and and it's and i can see it's gen it's totally genuine you're totally genuine yes i mean during beauty school we're learning all about the skin and everything so i want to take the knowledge that i learned from beauty school and do training after that to be able to do um laser tattoo removal to be able to remove tattoos from human trafficking survivors who maybe were forced to get a tattoo from their pimp because I saw this one picture 
that was floating around the internet and everybody was laughing at this poor little girl. Everybody was making fun of her because it was this young black girl who had the word loyalty in huge letters tattooed on her cheek. And people were laughing at her for being so stupid to get that tattoo. But I recognized immediately what it was. It's a pimp tattoo. And these pimps, they get these girls to get tattoos on their faces or whatever, so that it's like impossible for them to leave and to get a better life, you know? So I definitely want to learn how to do laser tattoo removal to help survivors reclaim their bodies in this way. My, my pageant coach, she advised me not to bring up that I'm a survivor of human trafficking during the pageant because she's worried that maybe the judges will have some kind of bias towards me or they're going to judge me a certain way. But you know what, even though I respect her opinion, I have to speak from my heart. And I want every girl who grew up like me, who was bullied, who became vulnerable to abuse and things like that, that it, it doesn't matter. You're not disgusting. You're not, uh, you're not stupid. You're not any of these things. You're a survivor. Look yeah. at me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think you, I, I, I understand both sides. I understand why your coach would say that. And it's, there's, it's, it's, a, it's intelligent from one way, but I understand from your point of view that nothing should quiet you ever. You should speak your truth always, you know, and mm -hmm. what kind of example, if you're hiding something when you want others exactly. to, to speak exactly. out about it, you know, and, and it's got to be like eliminated. It's not even reduced. There's got to, there's in my mind, there's zero you know, room for this. There's not like yeah, there's one, room. one girl, one girl is one girl too many. Like this has to be eliminated. Exactly. And, and, and I don't know, we're going to, we'll speak offline because you got to educate me on how do we can, you know. Okay, for sure. More. Exactly. Cool. Because, you know, like some things can be justified, like, okay, you can justify robbing a bank, <laughs> um, but there, there's no justification for pimping at all. It's just evil. Yeah. There's no, there's no way to look at it from a different angle. Yeah, yeah, there's exactly, there's no, there's no, there's no silver lining. It's just, it's just evil and it's wrong and it's proof yeah. that the devil does exist. <laughs> That's it, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so let's like, let's end it on something like positive and happy, okay? Because <laughs> let's, of course. Let's, bring every, let's bring everyone up. You know what, something positive and happy is that we're even having this discussion. Yeah. You know, it, it's not as, you know, 10 years ago, there was no Me Too movement you know people women were just expected to just shut up and just endure yeah. just bury it and so a positive is that we're even talking about it and there's all these new resources now that are available like the joy smith foundation like the national human trafficking hotline so we're going in the right direction yeah, that is, it's true. That is, that is positive. And there's, I mean, there's plenty more work to be, to be done until this is uh, eliminated uh, completely, you know, cell, just like cell phones and cameras, everyone has a camera. Like that's just, uh, that's positive too, right? Like in the sense that, you know, yeah. I, I know that like a lot of these things can't happen because people just pull out, you know, they pull out the camera and start recording and stuff like that. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's exactly. helpful. In a, in a certain way exactly people always talk about you know the negativities of social media and how we're all too connected online i think it's a good thing because now everyone is so much more connected to share their experiences people don't feel so alone when they become victims of abuse they have the internet they have the phone to connect with all the other survivors and get support and get help yeah, I think though that on that note, though, I, I I completely agree, and it's so much a positive. But then again, this the two sides of the same coin is that it's also um, unfortunate that Instagram and Facebook people only post usually like their best moments or their best yeah. like right. So then everybody thinks that everyone else is having such a great life because they don't mm -hmm. post the down times. It's like, exactly. look what I'm eating. I'm eating a lobster and this, and like with this bottle of wine, you're like, oh, it's amazing. Oh, I'm in Greece. I mean, well, now nobody's traveling, but you know, I'm in this place and it's so beautiful and look how happy I am. And, and then you start thinking, well, why, like, why is everyone so much more happy than me? And they're doing all these amazing and interesting things and I'm not. Exactly. So like, that's, uh, I think it's it was. a double-edged sword. Yeah. yeah, I think it was Gary V that was saying that, that he's like, you know, you want to, you want to do a uh, service to humanity, start posting your down days. 
like posting like, hey, I made this like dinner and it's like, it's terrible. Like I burnt it. <laughs> like, it's awful, you know, like it's not good at all. You know, like, and then post I it. totally you know, agree. You know, that's real. It's impossible to live up to. And then it just makes you feel bad. And again, like we're talking about brings you vibration down. And that's not, that's not cool. You know, not, not a positive thing at all. So um, any last thoughts, Catherine, anything? Last thoughts. Well, I'm just so grateful that you reached out to me to do this podcast. I'm really happy that we're friends. And um, I look forward to talking more in the future. And yes, I'm just so happy. Like you, you totally made my day. Like you totally made my Sunday. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, you know what, what we will do is um, I'll definitely have you on and follow up because when you win the title i'm just very positive knock on wood jinx it, I don't <laughs> jinx it but when you win or whatever experience like well i will have you back and then i, I think you're uh, such a inspiring you're such an inspiring person and oh, you're you. so warm and and the world needs to see more of you so I, it's, it's it's like uh it's my pleasure to, to have you on and to share your your message and i know it's going to help a lot of people uh, and that 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 makes me feel very good. And we'll just continue, like you know, um, every few months or whatever, and having you on, you know, as as a guest. Oh, that would be great. We won't stop until like we've eliminated like all these horrible things that are happening in the world. And and we'll see. And how it is possible. People think yeah. it's not possible. It is possible. No, I believe. I believe so too. I believe so too. So um, okay, with that, um, I wish you a successful and peaceful Thank mind you. and a great day. Okay, bye, Catherine. Bye.